that's your cue. Cue to do what? <laughs> Host the episode. Come on, introduce us. Uh, hi guys, welcome to Ninjago Cast. I'm Purple. I'm no way. That's wrong word. <laughs> I'm LJ, and we're gonna have words about this. <laughs> I'm Meso. <laughs> And uh, this is the Doggo Cast! <laughs> Amazing. You know, the tried and true scenario of LJ watching the channel stuff for personal yeah. bets okay. and raisins I did. continues. <laughs> no, okay. I'm well, what do you mean, bets or raisins? <laughs> Master purple. None Master of my purple. bets had any effect on this. What about Master Purple? <laughs> I'm no. though. No, you're Master Purple. You're. Oh my goodness. Hi. Hi. That was funny. Ship LJ of a sensei ship. <laughs> yep. Oh, dang. All this right, reminds me was... of yesterday. Like, you missed it, Whew. Meso. Um, yesterday, I had Nick and Neek intro TT, uh, Brickfeed. Oh, dear. Yeah, it sounds like fun. <laughs> <laughs> so whenever anyone talks about go? the name order, if anyone questions it, they immediately go to the front of the line. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sick? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Purple was subject to the whims of a meme beyond her understanding. <laughs> okay. by the meme. But uh, anyway, to give an official introduction, hello everyone. Welcome back to Ninjago Cast, Masters of Pod Jitsu. I'm the Sensei LJ, and everyone here is not a Sensei. I'm a uh, I'm a Sensei substitute Sensei. <clears throat> yeah, that's fair. You did. You did take over while I was away. Exploring the Yo, world. Y'all, I took over everything while except antics and Sue. Away. Thank you. Of which well, none, you fired. none are expected to ensue today, because we don't actually have an episode to review. It's not an episode we're going to be talking about. We are instead going to be discussing the latest and greatest in Ninjago news, so make sure you tune in every... No, there's no regularly scheduled Ninjago cast. Basically, we're going to be talking about... <laughs> The new set images that came out for Ninjago Legacy, which is the first wave of 2019, in addition to an announcement made by Tommy Andresen over on Twitter about the TV show. <clears throat> Pretty much. I'm getting it's better at this. It's big news because the Ninjago Legacy sets have been, like, shrouded in secrecy for months, which is nothing new. You know, it takes a bit for set pictures to actually come out, but this one was special because the very concept of the wave nobody seemed to really get you know we we heard early on it was going to be old sets being remade <clears throat> that's the vibe we heard and then we heard nothing for months people were like okay is this going to be a celebratory wave is it going to be a time travel sub theme <laughs> is it going to be the themes ending and this is like the bionicle stars equivalent nobody knew anything for months now it's come out it's it's the former it's a celebratory thing Presumably to celebrate their 100 episodes. Uh, but also maybe, honestly, just because Ninjaga is so profitable and it's been going on for so long, they've built up such an impressive catalog of sets that they could actually just re-release them on occasion, you know, with new build techniques and new features, and they would be interesting enough for kids to want to buy them. Like Star Wars does that all the time. Why not Ninjaga? Mm -hmm. Shrug. I don't know. I, mm -hmm. I have no beef with it personally, but there's a there's a discussion to be made about them doing that for an original theme and, and what that means. Yeah. I digress. Honestly, yeah. Honestly speaking, legacy is probably the best word choice to use for the title of this wave. If there's more waves, because legacy just sounds so perfect for Ninjago. Oh, yeah. Especially going back to like seasons one and two. Because it really it is. is a legacy. Mm -hmm. So Okay, yeah, let's let's, let's address this. Oh, no, so we're actually going to wait time. to address this. Um, oh, okay, fine. First, we are going to talk about the announcement <laughs> that Tommy Anderson made on Twitter. Oh, boy. <clears throat> so, Tommy Anderson posted a picture of Garmadon that scared the community wholesale with the large oh, text, That's a wrap! That's a wrap! <laughs> <laughs> that's a wrap! <laughs> so, that, that's reassuring. I was one of them. That's, that's especially reassuring for Bionicle fans, as just the other day was the nine-year anniversary of the cancellation of Bionicle Generation 1. So, we're used yeah. to hearing this. So, Pretty much. <clears throat> okay. 
So the text said, Today we are wrapping the production of the four episodes which we announced at San Diego Comic-Con this year. It is truly a culmination as it marks the series' 100th episode. So today we celebrate the collaboration between Lego, Will Film, Jam, The Fold, The Hegman Brothers, Braggy Shoot, and the wonderful writers and people who has lent their talents, passion, and care to our precious Ninjago, Masters of Spinjitzu. And because we love the four-episode arc so much, we have decided to edit them to also become a feature-length TV film. This will be the film fans of the TV show canon deserve. Uh, small text, as always, we don't know when, how, or where it will air. We just make the stuff, and in super, super, super hard-to-see text that you have to brighten the image to actually read... And even before that, some other Ninjago content will be coming your way, winky face. It will be dedicated to our much-missed good friend, colleague, and master of spinjutsu, Scott Godon, and I will not try to pronounce that last name, unfortunately, who sadly passed away a few weeks ago. Love from the Ninjago team, Ninjago. And love from the Ninjago community, too. He didn't say and that. And love from the other Bionicle community. We didn't say that either. For continuing on Ninjago's legacy. I mean, vice versa. Okay. So, <laughs> obviously enough, there's this, this is a big deal because this is going to be a TV movie in the same way that... I actually don't have a comparison. What is another TV movie that I can point to? High School like, Musical. Like I said, it, oh, no. oh, yeah, that's a good one. High School Musical. But High School Musical didn't come from a TV series. It doesn't matter. It's a, it's a TV movie in that same sense. Okay. So this is essentially what they're going to try and do with it. So I'll let you guys discuss this first before I chime in. Okay, Haley, uh, I like you, let you me being, go first. I, I like you being happy. Get it out. Get your happiness out before I crush it. All right, I appreciate it. I, <laughs> I am, like, exploding with enthusiasm about this. I think this is a wonderful decision on the uh, part of. The creators of combining these into a movie they they didn't have to do this but it is the perfect amount of episodes to make it for a feature length kids movie um i there is nothing that i've seen so far that could shout shout any doubt on this i think it it's a beautiful idea i think it's amazing especially at this point in ninjago to have like a movie rather than, you know, the cinematic movie that came out that was kind of disappointing. And it's actually funny in Tommy's words to say, like, it's a movie that we deserve kind of, kind of a little edge at Warner there. <laughs> but, um, but I, I'm just excited to see what they have in store. And they're doing this for a reason. There has to be a plot that's worthy enough to become a movie rather than just four episodes. And I'm excited to see what they have in store. For this, this is this is a big deal. It's nice to be able to say that Ninjago is getting another movie that is in tune with the <coughs> canon TV series, rather than just new people throwing their own ideas on the characters and not really understanding what Ninjago is. Now we're getting the people who created Ninjago to fold it into something that we wanted but didn't get, so now we're actually receiving it in canon too so that's that's it's it's just so wonderful so i'm super excited to see what they have in store for us so i'm gonna make an analogy here to kind of describe how i feel about this L lj might be exasperated with me as a result of this i don't know <clears throat> so way back when in 2004 there was a bionicle uh a bionicle combination model called ultimate doom and it was a combination <laughs> model of Krekka. Nidiki and uh, and Turaga Doom, and you could build it using all three of these sets. You could combine it together. Lego saw fit to actually stick all three sets in a box, make a new box image for it, and put in one exclusive piece, and release it like as a set, or try to release it as a set anyway. A lot of people don't consider it a set. Some people do. It's a, it's a big, convoluted thing. But as much as I've memed LJ in the past, mm. functionally, it is a combination model. It's all dressed up nice and pretty, but it is no more than the the parts that make it up. You oh. know, the oh, sum wait. of the parts. You're, you're the not... sum of the parts 
technically does not exceed the parts themselves. Oh, okay. So, okay. wow. I don't know why I'd be annoyed. You're actually just saying what how I my my, my well, standpoint. Yeah, yeah, it's because I'm bringing it up in the first place. No, no, fair yes, enough. Uh, no, I I, I prefer. I'm way. using your viewpoint. Okay. Um, this is basically what they're doing with the movie. To use a, this roundabout crazy example, there it it's just four episodes, edited. Big quote marks. What that really means is they're just going to like remove the intros from each episode, remove the outros from each episode, and maybe tighten up a few like cliffhangers to where they blend naturally together. And they're marketing it as a movie for two reasons, I think. One, goodwill, because it's a cool thing to say. Hey, this is going to be a celebration <laughs> of the Ninjago theme, so we're getting the new movie. And also... Honestly, I think to circumvent the botched airings of the Ninjago episodes that Cartoon Network has been doing for the past, <laughs> because by releasing one standalone program, it's easier than trying to schedule four different ones. It's uh, still watches it somehow. Pretty much, I was, I was joking with Haley, like they announced it for a certain date and then preempt it for whatever reason, and like don't tell anyone they've changed it. <laughs> but I mean. Don't get me wrong, it's awesome. I like it. But it's all it's all window dressing. That's all it is. Let, what about let's mask be, dressing? Let's oh my god, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> like it's 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 a it's the closest thing to a semantics kind of discussion that we could possibly have in regards yeah. to Ninjago. Yeah. Um it's not anything with a crazy budget behind it. It's not going to get some crazy re release that's going to elevate the theme's popularity. It's just a supercut of episodes. And in fact, it actually might mess with stuff because we memed a while ago that this was supposedly the big, you know, 100th episode celebration. And that, like, the technically the 98th episode was going to be the 100th episode because they count the pilots as, uh, as individual episodes. But now this four episode thing is going to be edited to also be a movie so will it still count as episodes and which will be released first if it's going to be released in both ways it's a big mess of a thing yeah that that was a point i was making i think off air that yeah, it will depend heavily on the order of release because if they do release the film mm -hmm. we're still only at like what 96 well, yeah. episodes at that the point? key word is also. The, well, of the course, of episodes course. will exist. So therefore, there will be like episode 90, 5, 6, 7, 8 will exist, but there will be a cut that is also a movie that's like a special <laughs> for the fans. Yeah. So. It's kind of like how the pilot episodes can be either two episodes or four, mm -hmm. depending on how they're cut. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and, and so I, I'm, I'm interested to see how they actually go about it. Like how, w yeah. what is coming out first? Because that will really... I, I think that's going to certain extents alter the way people look at it. And this is, of course, it not will. considering the fact that they don't consider Day of the Departed a part of that episode counts. Yeah, Which that is absolutely me. ludicrous. That but really what? bothers me. It's like Cole's one little thing isn't even included in the episode count. I don't care about Cole. It's the I only care thing in Ninjago like... that's not included in the episode count. Is Day well, of why the isn't it bizarre? Why? Because I mean, it's, it's, a it's a special. It's a quote on special. But it's now a we have this, this episode. Now we have a special movie that's that also being counted as episodes. episodes. Well, Day of the Departed oh, would sorry. technically count as two episodes because it's forty-four minutes long. So, mm -hmm. uh, so that, that was interesting. I am grateful, obviously, for the team to get more Ninjago content. I love the yeah. series. And I'm grateful for Tommy trying to do goodwill missions to appease the people who got burned by the Lego Ninjago movie. All that's well and good. But big picture, uh, I'm sorry, Haley. This story <laughs> doesn't mean anything. Yeah. It's the fact that they're actually doing it. They could have just released the four episodes and called it a day, but they're, I guess they're acknowledging the fact that we wanted the Lego Ninjago movie to be something great and it wasn't and this is like them trying to kind of make up for that because you know it's a it's basically throwing something at warner the way i would have settled it, with passable but but it's i think it's a nice little nod to us 
that they're mm-hmm. actually doing something. And as you were mentioning that it could be easier for them to air it if it just airs it all at once, which is a very good thing. Instead of having four random episodes, because it's four episodes, I mean, we look back at Rebooted and Rebooted took an entire year to release eight episodes. So it would take them maybe forever to release those four episodes. But if it's all in one movie, you release all of them at once and boom, you're done. Did we ever talk on Ninjago cast about how you miss hashtag watch Ninjago live 2018 missed like the last five episodes yes. of Hunted? I don't think we talked about that. I don't think we ever mentioned that. Yeah. <laughs> but it deserves mention because they changed the release dates around. And it was very cruel of Cartoon Network. And they just aired them all at once. Oh, yeah. Well, they had set up an airing where, like, it was every, I think, Saturday at a certain time. Yep. And it changed that time every other week. It went from, like, I think, 2 to, like, one thirty, then back to 2, then back to one thirty, And then all of a sudden, mm-hmm. they released the last four episodes on, like, Tuesday through Friday, just randomly. And I'm like, well, what? This, is, this isn't a TV show where you can just randomly drop episodes. <laughs> this is a chronological, like, it's like The Flash or something. You can't change the airing of it. Because it, it it it's a story, but mm-hmm. whatever. Surprisingly, yeah. Cartoon Network sucks, and this might be an easier way for them to circumvent it. Oh yeah, 100%. or at least that's what I would say if they weren't also going to be releasing it as four episodes anyway. I'd rather they just do we'll one or the other. <laughs> well, I guess the big question is how is it going to be pirated? So <laughs> in all the ways you could imagine. That's the real question. <laughs> how and when is going to be pirated? But... Sky pirated. Oh, my God. Holy crud. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm, I'm interested to see what we end up getting. Obviously, I'm looking forward to it no matter what, and I think it's a very kind thing of of the team to do to yeah. dedicate it to uh, their colleague that passed away. So I think that yes. that's really that is a wonderful yeah. thing. The heart of it. That aside, I I do find myself agreeing with Mesa more than anything else. I think that it is it just it's not a bad thing. Like I don't want to, nope. I don't want to make this seem like this is bad. It's not. It's really wonderful, and I think that it's actually kind of cool that the Ninjago TV show writers are giving us a film that they would have wanted to see and and the fans would have wanted to see over what we ended up getting in the Lego Movie Cinematic Universe. At the same time, it's just really confusing when you have all of these different things. You have the pilots. Day of the Departed. You're not counting them entirely at the same level. And then you have this, which is a movie, and then it's four episodes. So are we at 100? Are we at 103? Are we at 102? Are we at 101? It Where feels are, neat are we? Are we at 98? <laughs> 98. It seems to me that the whole, the whole purpose of, me, of celebrating 100 episodes, to me, is to be able to put the flag down, you know, make a line in the sand and be like, this is our milestone, (laughs) 100 100 episodes, and we're going to celebrate it. And this has an aura of celebration, but it's very vague and poorly defined. Uh, Like, take a look at Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s 100th episode. You're watching that, and you know what it is, and when you watch it, that episode is a almost self-contained celebration of the show. With this, I don't even know what the 100th episode is or if the 100th episode will be any more special than episode 99 or 101, which it probably won't be because it's going to be a movie. (laughs) I don't know. It's a a big old shrug. Like LJ said, it's not bad. I'm just no, I'm no more excited about the Ninjago movie than I am about the Ninjago four episode special. Also, Prentice, good old Meso mentioning S.H.I.E.L.D. whenever possible. Can't wait for season 12. I don't know. <laughs> I'm looking forward to season 14, personally. What? what? <laughs> it's going to go on for that long. Time travel? <laughs> Shut your face. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think right now it all resides on the plot. It all depends on what the plot is for these four episodes. Mm-hmm. So. Because I have something about that. I think it would be very interesting if instead of just editing the episodes together, like just chopping off the top, chopping off the end, and like combining it together, they have some way where they can take the four episodes and scramble them and somehow manage to make a movie out of it. That'd I be think cool. That would be really, really cool. Because it's it will be different. The pacing will be more, I guess, palatable. 
than just like combining four episodes and making it in a movie. I don't know if they can do it. Like it all depends on the plot. Well, there's a perhaps yeah. baseless rumor that says that each of the episodes was going to revolve around one of the four original ninja. Which and in that there, case, yeah. If there's I... any truth to that, this movie could be what you're saying. They could just take the scenes from those four episodes and scramble them. And it would make a very well-paced movie. Maybe. So. I actually do have one more thing in regards to that from Tommy's Twitter. Because he showed it to oh, yes. his kids, mm -hmm. I think. Or yes. at least one of his kids. He says, he specifically calls it the film edit of the four-episode conclusion to Sons of Garmadon and Hunted. Oh. That is his wording. So it is a continuation. And... <laughs> Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's Not just the continuation, continuation, but a conclusion. <clears throat> and the the skeptic realist in me has to have the thought, so they're going to introduce and resolve the Oni threat in a, in this one movie, eh? Wait, 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 wait. That is what, also what dealing say? with Jay and Nia. What, 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 what did Tommy say? Uh, how many parts? Four episode conclusion to Sons of Garmadon and Hunted. Sons of Garmadon and Hunted. So that Hands of Time isn't counted in that? Not really. Well, no, I don't think they count Hands of Time in a trilogy. I mean, the only the only real aspect of Hands of Time that ties into Woo. Sons of Garmadon Hunted directly is Wu. Yeah, but that's a so. awfully major point to it's, tie in. It is a pretty off yeah. I well, mean, he, he's, that... he's referring by when he says that he has to be referring to the Oni and the Dragon plot line. Yes. Um, and if it's going to conclude Sons of Garmadon, then it has to follow up on uh, Hunted's cliffhanger, which is that the Oni are coming. And in order to conclude that, they have to introduce and then resolve that threat. And I'm very skeptical they can do that in a movie while also dealing with the Jaya wedding. Yeah. <laughs> Like, it would have been totally fun. I've been totally happy if I heard it was the conclusion for Hunted and Sons of Garmadon, except for the fact that we got that one scene that is basically Jay and Nia are having a huge, you know, I don't want to say conflict, but, you know, Jay's having a conflict asking her to, you know, be his yang or marry her. And all of a sudden we're having the Oni conclude too? I mean, that's this is four episodes. Like, this is a, not a lot of time. I'm just saying, Haley. Like one of okay, them, Jay and might... Nia, is going to be an Oni the whole time. I'm just oh saying. Oh my gosh. They're going to like get up and marry each other, and then it's going to reveal itself and like try to kill the other person and be like, they've been dead the whole time. Oh my gosh. <laughs> if anything, it's going to be Jay, because we know nothing about Excuse Jay's Excuse me? But Jay's actually an Oni. That Jay reality. is actually an Oni? Nia's actually an Oni. <laughs> What? what is your evidence for this? What is her evidence? <laughs> I don't even have evidence for Jay. But, yeah, Wu's been an Oni the whole time. Yes. Okay. It's a weird situation. It but is. I look forward to hearing more about it. Hopefully we don't have to wait 100 years to actually watch the thing. Yes. <laughs> January to March. We'll... It's all up to Cartoon Network. It's going to be April. For United States. Yeah, probably. But January for you too. All right. Okay. Let's begin talking about these here sets. The sets. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, <clears throat> as I like to do, we are going to go largest or er, sorry, whoopsie, smallest <laughs> to largest, and we will go ahead and start off with a few of these spinners. So, over the last week, this was a terrible week for a ton of sets to just spill onto the scene and be revealed <laughs> like we ended up spending nearly four hours the other day talking about everything except for city most of creator and technic and ninjago and this is majority of the reason that we're doing ninjago cast today it's because these sets so <clears throat> we got quite a few and this is for the ninjago legacy line and we're gonna start off really small We'll start with the spinners, and this first one is set number 70659, Spinjitsu Kai. This is going to retail for roughly $10 and has 97 pieces. So, 
these spinners, they're all following a template where they have this this new piece, which is like a tornado, and you can customize them with the stuff, you know, that you put on the uh, on the top parts. And they all have different <laughs> aesthetics matching their elements. Now, I've never been one for the spinners. I've never bought one of these standalone spinner packs or anything like that. But I was talking to Haley about these sets, and I made the realization that these were the original Ninjago spinners. <laughs> It cannot possibly be overstated how much these have evolved. <laughs> and they deserve <laughs> so much credit for it. <laughs> Just compare those two. A flat orange circle versus a transparent fiery tornado <laughs> with attachments. These are sick. And I want at least one. Which Most one? Definitely. Dang, yeah. Uh, we win grab it on. I mean, sorry, no, uh, Garmadon and Lloyd, and also Wu and Nia. So basically, both of the combo packs. Okay, fair enough. We'll get into those in just a sec. Um, Kai yeah. has cool fire. Yeah. All right. Uh, J. Uh, Kai's, yeah. It's fire. Anyone else? It's okay. Cool. It looks like an ice cream. We can't really talk like about that. each individual spinner. I mean, we can. <laughs> okay, fine. Just try yeah, harder. Coles is the best, just just because. <laughs> yeah, <it's polite. laughs> Coles is like literally the worst, that I'm not even beaming you. No, it's, it's obviously the best. Wow, treble in paradise, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, oh, look cool. at this. Haley, Haley, look at this picture, and tell me how this is the best. <laughs> what part of that? Oh, is... obviously. Can you, do you not clearly see Cole, the best ninja inside of that spinner? It looks you. like a bootleg mech suit with tiny arms. <laughs> I know it's supposed to be hammers, but it's like minifigure scale hammers <laughs> on the spinner, and it looks so tiny. <laughs> Sensei Wu said it was my turn to play on the game station. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Okay. Well, I'll blitz through these rather quickly. Uh, set number 70661, Spinjitzu Zane. Obviously enough, he's got some ice. He's nice. It looks so, so can... good in transparent blue. <laughs> you can see that there. It's going to retail for about 10. Number of pieces is to be announced. Next up. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, we do have Coles. This is set number <clears throat> 70662. Spinjitsu Cole. Going to retail for roughly $10 and has approximately 117 pieces. So he is actually better than before because he's the Master Chief from Halo. Nice. <clears throat> All right, next one is set number 70660 Spinjitsu J. He's going to retail for roughly 10, have about 97 pieces. In full honesty, this is probably the second best of the spinners because it is J. Ha, ha, ha. The electric colors really work for that one. <clears throat> Indeed. Oh, I feel like this is a minifigure representation of a better Mark Surge from Hero Factory. Yep, pretty much. It's the exact same kind of a scheme. Yeah. <laughs> Almost identically. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Peel <laughs> in the patron chat. If you go ahead and click that link I posted earlier for Kai's spinner, scroll all the way to the bottom. Go ahead and hit sets. Expand it. Go all the way to the bottom again. You'll see a full That list. is already so much work. I know, but it's also a lot of... I'm trying to blitz through these, okay? They're just spinners. I'll post them. I'll post them, LJ. No worries. <sighs> Thanks, I got buddy. you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. my gosh. <clears throat> anyway. All right. And then our first combination is actually... This one here, this is set number 70663, Spinjitsu, Nia, and Wu. It's going to retail also, according to this website, it's going to retail for about $10. I find that unlikely, personally. It can't be true. Oh. <laughs> uh, and 20. the part count is to be announced. So I'm just going to pause with this one and say that this is one of the best ones. And it's not just because Wu's spinner is black, white, and gold. Oh but gosh. mostly because Wu's spinner is black, white, and gold. But secondarily, because of epic teapot combat. Oh. Behold, 
My gosh. <laughs> Flaming teapots of death. <laughs> I mean, That's so good. Wu did use yeah. his teapot for combat in season one, so it's so epic. It's accurate. He's also wearing his uh, his uh, kimono, his famous kimono. That yeah, it's Wu's first Ramadan spinner. Old Wu's first Wu's spinner. Magic, but the teapots are too great. Ninjago oh, yeah. was a mistake. You're a mistake. You're a mistake. Wow. <laughs> okay, someone's sensitive. You just got double roasted. I mean, <laughs> double roasted He's got by roasted them. Couples edition. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's. Uh, yeah, uh, it's like it's not head. really that much of a roast. It's like being roasted and, and, by one person with two heads. Yeah, absolutely shredded. Okay, sorry. Do we want to go this. back? Do we want to go back, purple, to the beginning of the episode where you sat there like a potato with a purple wig, going, "I, I don't know how oh, to intro an episode." Me to do something I didn't want to do. Oh my goodness, <laughs> you volunteered inadvertently no, I didn't. I by complaining didn't. about the name order. No, I never said so. Well, you know what? So these Ninjago sets are great. They really are awesome. The next one is my personal favorite. Uh, okay. <clears throat> so the next one is actually also my personal favorite. And this is the best of them. This is set number 70664, Spinjitsu Lloyd versus Garmadon. This set is going to retail for about $20 and contains roughly 208 pieces. Now, this is the best the for one very game. important reason. There's purple snakes. It's Armadon. green. It's purple. It's purple! It has, it's green, dang it. Dude, it's black and purple and it's tiny baby snakes. It's green and gold! And it's the best... It's so the, edgy! It's the best shade of green to matte green. And I don't care! What anyone else says? Oh my god, it's got transparent purple. Um, <laughs> purple versus LJ Dawn of the favorite colors. <laughs> okay, we need to get we need to get these spinners. We have to do and fight. We need yeah, we need to get these spinners and then go to Brick Fair, Virginia next year and and have combat. <laughs> Put your sick yes. bags on the spinners. Yes. Oh my god, yes. Yes. I will be bringing <laughs> oh them. God. So. But yeah, no, I like this one. I like this one a lot. This is definitely one that I see myself getting. Yeah, it's like I never, I never get the spinners. I'm not into the whole play gimmick, but these are so well designed. They've advanced so much. I feel like I, I need to get at least one or two. They're just so impressive. If they actually can spin well, that'll be the one thing to determine. But I don't see why they wouldn't. Why? It's like, like it's like the show, because the spinjitsu has improved so much over the years that it's like the spinners haven't. It really has. It's gotten yeah. so much better. They gained so many new abilities, like air oh, jitsu, yeah. and then forgot about them. I have to talk so about much. spin jitsu. Spin jitsu <laughs> has stuck around the whole time. And, and compare yeah, the, the Master Wu's tornado. They actually use in the show. Oh yeah, yeah. Remember back when spin jitsu actually had logic behind it? They were just moving so fast inside the tornado. They still do that. But now, now it's just like momentum. No. No. Remember when Harumi got booped off the pressure plate by Lloyd, like bonking <laughs> real fast? Like, whoop. how about the visuals of the <laughs> tornadoes? Like the visuals of the sets. They're, they've both improved tremendously. Yeah. So I'm with you there. Are you two done? There you go. No, go on for another hour. Oh yeah. Please don't. I have a. I I'm I'm gonna be the one that ties it back into the show. I'm gonna raise my hand, and be like, and uh, the accuracy Excuse of this. Excuse me, match. this this show accuracy <laughs> ratio needs to be called out. Okay, so, well, so uh, show accurate. It, it it it's representative. So, <laughs> and that's where the representation <laughs> ends. The accuracy ends at this very moment, because no. from this oh, no. point on, we are going to get into some rather peculiar items on the docket. Let's <clears> go. All right, next up, I'm really annoyed these pictures are not scaled properly. Gosh dang it. Okay, next up is set number 70680, Monastery Training. The set has approximately, to be announced, amount of pieces. and is going to retail for <laughs> roughly $10. Woo! And that, that's it. Woo. It's It's just a monastery training. Well, I guess we can go ahead and start talking about the Bach art. Just... It's really cool. Kai finally getting that spotlight he deserves. 
Way more oh, than those other weak losers like Cole. I just Cole. cringed. <laughs> so hey, hard. Kaya to share his last season with Nia. I know. And he's gonna do it again this time because she's getting married. I mean, the only reason I'm not gonna complain is because he was, was that, like, he was the first one back on no. the block, so he. One of them's gonna die before fair. they get married. But. God, I hope so. Y Yin it's Yang be, is, what, is what it's about. Wait, what? The third wheel is gonna die. Cole's gonna die. Again? Yeah. <laughs> again, yeah, again. <laughs> Permanently. Box art's really cool. It's very flashy. I like the font for Legacy. Um. The monastery training set, yet yeah, yeah, it's small, but I actually really like it. It's a good representation, and there's a lot of play value in it for being such a small set. It also has a metric ton of gold weapons that actually yeah. makes it kind of desirable. It's kind of cool. <laughs> and it has this new little feature that you'll see in, uh, in some of the sets as we go forward and talk about them, where it's like you put the ninja on this little stick that you can twist, and when you twist it, they're, they'll like use their weapons. Like I posted a picture in Discord. It's kind of small, but you yeah, can see that it's really, about. really small. Yeah. 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 I mean, there, there it is for everyone watching. It is a. You'll see this, like Miss was saying, through a lot of them. So. So yeah, it's neat. Why Nia's in her ninja garb? And fighting in the monastery? I don't know. Maybe they'll rebuild the monastery. I feel that this is a really oh. good opportunity to address the elephant in the room. Go on. Go on, elephant. On the box, plain as day, like a giant sunspot. <laughs> something you really hate being there. Something you just want to get rid of. Like like a person oh, on a snake. channel. That's so cute. Oh it, my god, it's Pythor. It says here, featured in season one. Yeah! And this, oh, yeah. This, season will, one. this will get far more egregious earlier, trust me. But we're just, I just want to address that and keep that in mind as Mid we keep going. Oh, yeah. You see season I... one with Pythor above it? Oh, you know. wow. You see <laughs> season one, one with Nia as a ninja? <laughs> Yeah, okay. I, I was about to well, say. That, that uh, happens I, in I another remember, show. I totally remember in season yeah. one when Pythor was there and Neo was a ninja fighting in the monastery. <laughs> that totally okay, happened. The, the Nia being a ninja thing is dumb. That happens in the J set as well, that she's also a ninja, but I guess there was nothing they could really do about that. Mm. Oh, but yeah. The nothing fact that season one is the serpentine season. They also include her samurai armor else. in the set. <laughs> <laughs> There's oh, no defense. <laughs> The defense is that they don't care. They deliberately made it uh, not representative of the the show because it's meant to be like a, a celebration, I think, yeah. or a rebuilt monastery. It's awful. But you, you buy this, and it will go with the monastery set. So. Bingo. Either way, I don't like this. And this is actually the least offensive because it's an awfully vague set. So let's mm -hmm. move on to the next one, unless there's anyone else that wants to say anything. Nope. Good. Nope. Okay. Uh, there's the back of the box for everyone wondering. I know you were really, really concerned about that. Okay, next Thank one is <laughs> 70665 Samurai Mac. The set contains roughly 154 pieces and is going to retail for about $15. Okay. So this one is a tad controversial amongst everyone here. This is obviously mm -hmm. a remodeled variant of set number 9448 Samurai Mech from 2012, and it is, in fact, smaller than the original. To give you an idea, the original set from 2012 retailed for $40 and contained 452 pieces. Discuss. I mean, yeah. like, it looks cool. That's about the one thing that I, I, I will say. It's accurate. The It is accurate. It's not a bad set. It's well made, and it gets the detail on point for being... Except for the build. <clears throat> but, <clears throat> you know, one thing I will say that it exists is, while I can respect <laughs> it as a cool set, it's a little bit difficult for me to see the appeal in it when one already does exist. And it's and it's better and like I own it. 
So subjectively, I'm just kind of looking at this and I'm like, okay, why would I buy this? Even the articulation is worse because I get to mix old joints and they can't bend at certain, you know, in certain ranges because the, uh, the joint articulation is handled very differently. So there really isn't any kind of incentive to get this, uh, except maybe the really cool redesigned skeleton warriors. <laughs> so let's talk about them. So they have Cruncha and Nicole here. And what did they do? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> what did they do? Like, okay. I'm not one to say that the original Skulkin were were good. They really weren't. They looked kind of bizarre. The heads were too big. The armor was, was kind of weird. The the skeletons wearing boots was kind of weird. They weren't great minifigures, but these new ones, they're ugly. <laughs> it's like they took, <laughs> they took away the armor or or downright marginalized it. In these guys' case, they just don't have it in those pictures. Uh, they lost the boots. They just have regular skeleton legs with these huge feet. And they, like, quadrupled the size of his mohawk. <laughs> like, there's comparison pictures. It was just kind of spikes in the original one, but now he has a full-on mohawk. Hmm. And I really got to wonder, why <laughs> did anyone want that? Did, was anyone asking for those changes? What part of celebrating Ninjago's past is releasing a character with a quadrupled mohawk? <laughs> <laughs> well, he ain't exactly a fan favorite, but it's kind of a, a problem with like the Overlord. Spoiler alert. They were releasing an iteration of him in a wave designed to celebrate the past, and the iteration looks nothing like any time he's ever showed up in the past. It's kind of kind of weird, but eh, that's just kind of that's kind of my diet drive. It really bothers me. Yeah. So it's a well-designed set on its own merits, but there's no reason why I would ever get it. Okay. <laughs> it was it was the wrong set to like downscale. They could have done another set and downscaled it but not one that they already have, like, a perfect big scale of. And the fact that they threw the skeletons in with the samurai mech in which neither of them existed at the same time. Like, samurai happened in season one. The skeleton. Oh, yeah, you're right! Silent season. <laughs> like, she wasn't even a samurai. When I didn't even think skeleton. about that! So. That's so wish. weird! So. What? <laughs> Why did they do that? I don't know. That's like the big thing that's bothering me. But I, they could have, mm. they could have just done like a skeleton vehicle, and instead of like a smaller skeleton vehicle, instead of like the samurai mech or something. But all right, well, whatever. I'm I'm done ranting. But that that theme kind of happens throughout Legacy, where they throw in a random minifigure that isn't exactly from that time. Oh but yeah, I like you forward. just have to, have to, to stick with that. Pretty much, it's kind of a Ninjago theme throughout some of their sets. Just a random, you know, anaconda warrior and a, you know. Oh god, don't remind me about Python. Tournament of Elements. Okay. Don't remind me. Okay. <laughs> okay. I don't want to go down that I mean, road. Yeah. If you really want to look at Ninjago's legacy, they're they're really keeping. Oh, it. funny! Ha 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 ha! All right, <laughs> we're gonna but... move on now. Unless purple, you have anything, <laughs> Shyman? Nope. Awesome. Insightful. Right, what's next? Okay. Uh, let me get some of these pictures out of the way. Okay. It's just twelve fifteen. Lego. Hey, let's celebrate Ninjago and mess up all the continuity in our set. Yes, 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 yes. Fans, we noticed. <laughs> okay. Excuse me, LJ. I'm celebrating our patron chat by reading their insights. Next set seven zero six 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 bum, oh, bum, the, golden bah! the golden dragon the set contains roughly 171 pieces and is going to retail for about 20 smackaroos now <clears throat> obviously enough this is a reimagined iteration of set number seven zero five zero three the golden dragon from 2013 and the set is roughly 81 pieces smaller than the original. Thank you. Shout out to the Ninjago Wikia for doing the calculation for me because I suck at numbers. Because the original one had 252 pieces. Discuss. Um. Purple, you got any thoughts? 
I feel like you actually maybe could talk about this one. Yeah, I like, I really like this one. If I'm gonna get a set, it's probably gonna be this one, because the dragon looks like... Well, it's like, it looks basically exactly the same, but better. Mm -hmm. Like, the original was like a rough draft, this is like... It's using the mixel joints, they refined a lot of stuff. Yeah. Golden Dragon is one of the few I still have built. Oh, nice. So, yeah. Alright. Cool. I mean, my, my issues, uh, again... They're they're kind of nitpicky, but I feel like there is merit um, to pointing them out. The actual set's awesome, and I will probably try to get this one because it's small and you know affordable and cool looking. But I just have a few a few grievances. It's supposed to be a representation of Lloyd's battle with the Overlord Dragon when he he turned into the Golden Ninja, which presumably meant like his body was just coated in golden energy. Yet for some reason here he has a green headband. Question mark? I don't know. That that would imply he just like changed his, his uniform entirely, <laughs> like painted it. But that wasn't the actual point of the fight. Um, and also, the Overlord is like this weird amalgam. Like the minifigure itself is incredible. It's one of my favorite minifigures they've made. But it's an amalgamation of his four-armed form when he took over Garmadon's body that one time. His rebooted form where he had like the golden rib cage and the the face. And, like, it doesn't really evoke any kind of scene that we're familiar of with the Overlord. Like, he did not... It doesn't even make sense, because why does he have the gold here? He got the gold from Lloyd, but Lloyd's gold in the same set. Eh, I would have much rather them not remade the Golden Dragon and instead made the Overlord Dragon, which okay, everyone yeah. always wanted to see. Yeah. And yeah. then just put gold Lloyd... <laughs> Facing off against him, which is how which is it canon. actually happened. Which is canon, yes. So it's kind of one of those what might have been things. As it stands, the minifigures are cool, the sets are cool, but when you put them all together, it's this weird gray area where, again, it's celebrating a moment that didn't happen. So I think maybe in order to enjoy these sets, we have to look at things from a different point of view. Oh my gosh. And realize that Lego isn't so much celebrating the past as they are reimagining the past. Uh, and it's just a way to use their old concepts in new ways. And none of them are meant to be canon, really speaking. So. Well, the Overlord's like a combination of kind of his. Still not canon. Forms. Combination of forms yeah. is not canon. Well, it's a celebration of his character. There you so. go. It's a, it's a stylized portrayal. It's stylized, yeah. Hmm. But, and it's a neat set that I will try to get. Well, I'm going to um, go back to the box because I really like... This is the first time I see the character on the side of the box, which I really, really like. In the future, we'll see that each ninja kind of has... Except for Nia, poor Nia. Has like... Unless she's on the samurai one. I don't know if she's on the samurai one. But they have like a really cool side of the box where they kind of take it over and have a cool pose and stuff. But another thing is on the back of the box, there's like three little shots from the TV show when this, when it was an example of this set in the show, which is super cool. I love that they do that. They had it for the Samurai Mech and they have it for pretty much every other uh, box set. Uh, in the future, which like, is... coincidentally, don't show the Overlord. In those oh things. my gosh! <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> but anyways, I think that's a really cool shout out to the show. So. Oh yeah, it's mm. awesome. Oh yeah, shout out to the show. Let's talk about the other major issue with this this set. Go on. And that is the box. Oh god, so here we go. It says season two on it. Now let's oh my gosh. let's get something straight here. Blasphemy! I can forgive the monastery training. I really can. You know that can be any season one through three. Fair enough. But this is squarely in season three, everyone. Okay, this oh is my gosh. in no way, no. shape, or form. No season two. Season three mm -hmm. is rebooted. No, it's not. That's season four. <laughs> oh, yeah. so so what is what is hunted? I, 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 listen, lady. Oh, I don't know. I don't keep track of that stuff. Oh, you, you All can I'm... count. You can count. LJ, can you not count? I don't. Let's count with me. Let's see. Rebooted is season one. <laughs> what is rebooted? Season. What is okay? Say it. Ten. <laughs> rebooted, oh, so, rebooted. Hunt, 
How are you better to season 10? Wow, I, that's no, you impressive. Said hunted. Right you said hunted. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> so hunted is season 10. Good is four, then tournament of elements, 35. Possession is six. Uh, Skybound is seven. Hands of time, eight. Conversation. Yep, boom, there you go. Okay. <clears throat> so anyway, this is a here, problem. FYI. I oh. reject Lego's uh, Lego's notion of what constitutes a season. Yeah. No. That's... A season is not marked by how many episodes it has. It is marked by the story arcs it contains, and the mm -hmm. Skulkin more than qualified a full story arc. Yeah. In addition was to it that, pilot season. Like, uh, this is also the number. I, I, I count it by waves. Episode by one. Waves. <laughs> Listen, Sorry, it was season one. This is this is season was three. Serpentine. The the end because it has to be season three because Ninjago started in 2011. So, so the first season is in 2011, and then the second season is in 2012, and then the last one is in 2013. The, the pilot three season. years, <laughs> three years. That's a, a standard three year line, this and then is... they were gonna can it, and okay. then like fifty thousand phone not, calls a day this later. Is not bionicle. <laughs> You're right. This is You're not right. It's bionicle. not bionicle, but it's doing something. Bionicle got right at the very least. Well, Bionicle, Bionicle story... never had seasons to begin with. It, it had years. Like a TV show. It had years and release oh, waves. Ninjago. Same as Ninjago, but somehow Ninjago can't get this right. Darn you! Darn you, Cartoon Network! Darn you, Lego! Darn you, Tommy Anderson, who's been Darn so me. kind to us! You have to get this one right! This is the one time you have to listen to me! So you're saying that you're wrong. What and you know to be I'm right. saying they're wrong. Oh, well, that's, that's not very nice. Every other thing that it's on that claims that Serpentina Season 1 is wrong, including the creators. Yes. LJ has been bitten by the Great Devourer. He's fallen to the dark side. Not Excuse really. me, you agree with me! I do. I, but... LJ, I agree with you that the pilot is a season. I am not saying it is Season 1. I think it is by itself a pilot season that greenlit <clears throat> it to continue with Season 1. Hmm, interesting. Not season 0. In in interesting. Yeah, pretty much. Season zero slash pilot season. Interesting. And then it started with season one because it wasn't a season; it was just two episodes to like greenlit the show. Hmm. And then yeah, once they had the the, the season greenlit, mm -hmm. they were allowed to make an actual season <laughs> or a series. That's when they started the season one and season two. Rather well, I guess than you just could say the pilots us. were the reason for the season. So I guess yes. uh... so that's why they're including it in the count. Why it's season? Why it's episode uh -huh. one and two, even though it's not in the count of uh -huh. like the actual <laughs> seasons. Mm -hmm. It's so okay. confusing. Mm -hmm. but that's how I see yeah, it. Yeah, it is confusing. You it's know, not season one. You it's not season one. Season one is the way Serpentine. I go about it. <sighs> because yeah. my except I, I you're, except you're, it's different <laughs> from everyone else. That's that's <coughs> what's me. you know what is that? Uh... A long time ago, in a galaxy very near to us, a wise man spoke some wise words to me. Those words were, row, row, fight the power. So you know what? Oh That's exactly what I am going to do, Haley. That's exactly wow. what I am going to do, Purple. I am going to fight the power. I am going to count like a normal freaking human being who isn't going to sit there and it's have to be really told that if, if, like if, if we're going to take Ninjago and their season count as an example, then boy, oh boy, am I glad the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. just got renewed for season six. <laughs> the first one was a pilot season. <laughs> it was a green light season two. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> just the first of everything. I'm just gonna discount it. <laughs> Bionicle only did run for for nine years. 2001 was a pilot. <laughs> okay. Well, I apologize that Ninjago is different from both Shield and whatever they mentioned. You don't and need have to apologize. A one episode. Lego that needs to. That was by itself. Yes, Lego. Needs to apologize. <laughs> All right, <laughs> I've said my funny. piece. I'll, I'll... When you finally get Tommy on the show, you can ask him yourself and say. I oh. will. I absolutely will. Mark my words. <clears throat> All right, let's go ahead and move so, on to the next set. That I've... was funny. Don't worry, I will come back to this subject. Make no oh, mistake. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We don't have that. I will never give up. That is the pilot season. Not season one. Season one is Serpentine. 
It's okay. You know what? Oh, yeah. Here at TTV, we it's are no boxes. strangers to misinformation yeah. and being wrong. <laughs> True. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You're talking okay. about yourself, right, LJ? Oh, my God. I'm talking to you, the one who is oh, wrong. All right. All right. Next set, set number 70667, Kai's Blade Cycle and Zane's Snowmobile. The set contains approximately 376 pieces and is going to retail for roughly $30. This is a reimagining of not one, not three, not five, but two different sets. Specifically, set oh, number... I you could count that well. <laughs> Thank you. I tried very hard. Uh, set number... <laughs> 9441 Kai's Blade Cycle, which re was released in 2012. And set number 9445 Fangpire Truck Ambush, but only a snippet from that set, also released in 2012. Specifically, Zane's Snowmobile. Remember These... when I used to meme Fangpire Truck Ambush? <laughs> no. Aww. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Funny um, of oh. note... The snowmobile in this set is actually larger than the original one. That's how a remake should be. Oh, yeah. So, Cute. all right, discuss. This set is like, it's two bikes, and that's kind of all it is, but they're really cool bikes. They're very intricate, and they have a lot of details. And, uh, and they're a lot of very weapons. accurate. And they are very accurate, yes. <laughs> I can confirm that. Zane's motorcycle is incredibly accurate. It's... Amazing. Kai's is eh, but it's it's definitely it's better. There. Yeah. So. So it's one of those things that again, it's nothing too crazy, but it is also deserving of praise because it succeeds in what it's trying to do. And I also don't have any weird critiques like I do with the other sets. So automatically, it, it gets a thumbs up from me. I mean, yeah, I don't really have anything to add to this. Um, it's, it is two bikes, and for the sake of posterity, you know, I'm watching, off to the right is the Fangpire truck, and you can see the tiny little Zane bike, which is incredibly tiny. And in addition to that, I'll go ahead and show this, this is Kai's bike, which as you can see has been modified, it looks longer in the new one, and there is more black. So... The Fangfire truck ambush was a good set. Yeah, no, it's, it's cool. With a funny with a funny name. <coughs> yeah, look at that tail. Oh, I really like that one. Heck that yeah, the giant four-wheel Ninjago sets were always the uh, the best they had to offer back in the early days. I remember mm -hmm. the skull truck very fondly. I always wanted to get that when it never did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, rest in peace. Yeah. Anyone else? Anything to add? Nope. Nope. All right, fair enough. Yep, that is a set. I'm going to go ahead and move on. Okay, so next one is also another really good one. It's set number 70668 Jay's Stormfighter. The set contains approximately 490 pieces and is going to retail for about $40. This set is another reimagining. It is a reimagining of set number 94. For two Jay's Stormfighter from 2012. In addition, this is the first set to feature Pythor's purple minifigure since 2012, seven years earlier. And thank you years. once again. Thank you so very much to the Ninjago Wikia for that piece of trivia. I do appreciate that. That was cool. Okay, discuss. It's a it's a jet. But it's really cool. Yeah, Pythor's and cool. That's about it. And it's not show accurate. It's not? It's not. What's wrong it's, with it? It's about three times as, or three times longer than the actual show. Like, Jay's cockpit is like the majority of the actual ship. It's a very cool set. Uh, it's awesome. But it's definitely got a ton more detail than mm. what it was in the show and also don't want to you know forget to mention that ninja nia is hanging out in season one so yep ninja nia That's is hanging news. out wielding the golden nunchucks of spinjitsu mm -hmm. while jay flies his jet hold up wait a second oh wait 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 a second there's a problem with this am i right am i wrong 
Um, the jet can't exist separate from the nunchucks, right? Ha ha ha. Correct. Okay. Oh. So the entire premise is flawed. Zero out of ten would not buy. Oh my goodness. Oh wow. wow. Did the nunchucks not come with the original or something? Uh, let me check, actually, because I have the page. You probably beat me there. For anyone wondering, I do have... Uh, no, it doesn't look like they did. Ha, ah, ah. ha. Um, so I don't think the jet, like, the nunchucks turn into the jet. I think that... Well, maybe they do. Just needs them to... I don't know. I, I never noticed it. Yeah, I don't see anything about the nunchucks being a part of this. Uh... Yeah, no, they're not. I think that this set is a massive upgrade. Whether or not you think it's show accurate... To me, is a smidge no, irrelevant yeah, because this set oh, is yeah. just so, so much better in almost every single way. It's incredible. Oh, yeah, it's gorgeous. It re it reminds me a lot of a uh, the spaceship from the Lego Movie, like the flatness of it, like a very small scale spaceship. Maybe somewhat. Mm -hmm. I really like the gold blades that pop out near the back. The uh, the construction blades, they're they're really cool. They add a lot of detail. Mhm. Mm I like myself a good jet. I probably won't buy it, but I respect that it, uh, it's very well built. Yeah. Yeah, but no, I, I I'm quite a big fan. I also probably will not be getting it because, as much as Jay is easily the second best character in Ninjago. Most of his sets I usually don't end up picking up. You weak loser. Yeah, well, they're Excuse blue. Me. At the very least, this is actually a set... No, wait. No, never mind. Don't worry. Never mind. Forget what I was about to say. Okay. Uh, what were you going right. to say, LJ? What were you going to say? What were you going to say? What were you going to say? Yeah, what were you going to say? The numbering is wrong again. But anyway... We will move on. Oh, you didn't say anything about the last one. In my, you know, exactly, which is why I was going to skip it, because I didn't think it was important after we had a very lengthy and civil mm -hmm. conversation about it initially. You're correct, because the nunchucks <laughs> existed only from season Num one trucks. to the very end. <coughs> Actually, no, they existed in one episode in season two before they got melted. And then oh. they existed one more time in the time travel episode that we do not talk about, so. Correct. Let's right. talk next about the time one. travel episode. Let's We're not. not. <laughs> this next one's my favorite. Purple, do you have anything to add here? No. Nope. Okay. You should have some things is to add, Cohen? Purple. Is it the Cohen? Is it mix the Cohen? It up, mix it up a little. All right. So I we're mean, I talked and... about the dragons, but that's about it. Amazing. We're going to go ahead and skip uh, this coal set because, I mean... What? <laughs> no! It's coal. No! It's so, so good! Do we really no! need to bother? I went to the attic to find the old version of the Let's set. See. Whoopsie daisy. <laughs> okay. Dang. All right. Fair enough. We'll no. talk about this one. Next set is 70669 Cole's Earth Driller. The set contains roughly 580 pieces and is going to retail for about 50 smackaroos. This set is a reimagining of set number 70502 Cole's Earth Driller from 2013. <clears throat> the thing of note is that this new iteration, the set in total, has, according to the wikia, three times as many pieces from the original one in 2013. Or, 2012? 2013. Okay, it's giving me two different dates here, so I'm confused. But... <clears throat> okay, yeah, it says December 2012, so that'd be 2013. The set initially had 171 pieces, however, there have been some obvious modifications discuss oh yeah this set's one of the only ones they've released that is like yeah some of the other ones are better designed in certain ways than their old counterpart but this one is just like an objective step up in quality because of everything else it adds it adds a whole other dynamic for play value mm -hmm. and also the actual vehicle itself at first i thought it was like when we first saw the pictures i was like oh that's nigh indistinguishable but actually, looking at the two, there are some very distinct uh, oh, yeah. modifications. Some maybe for the worse. It all depends on preference. Um, aesthetically, it looks way better. But functional functionality-wise, it's longer. Because apparently, Kaylee, correct me if I'm wrong, the original had a function where the drill would spin automatically as you rolled it. Yep. Yes. Whereas so this the, new the two one... The front wheels were connected to the driller. 
that and that was its function. Good. Whereas this new one has ditched that in favor of a manual drill on the back, which almost causes a third extra width to the thing length. Rather. Yeah, that's cool. It's a it's preference. Kind of to, it's kind of hard to push this one anyway, so it might be for the better. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it looks way cooler. It has a lot more detail, a lot more uh, rock pieces, magma yeah. pieces. It's rounder instead of like, yeah, it's very round. It's got big curved blades on the back. It's got uh, a lot more color. The sand green is more vibrant than it was initially. <laughs> it's just great. It's a cool vehicle. And then I the love, Stone like, Warrior. Like, yeah. What's so funny else? No, nothing, nothing, nothing. Keep talking. All right. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, the Stone Warrior is the highlight of this. It's just really well designed. Really well designed. It uses the template from like Ares and Giant Man to deliver a four armed figure that is just nothing like this has been done before. And it's really well made. I don't really have any concrete objective analyses other than to say it's cool and it almost makes me want to buy it just for that figure alone because it's nice. so innovative. Um, yeah. Well I love it. I'm gonna jump in here about show accuracy because okay, I gotta fine. do it. The driller and the stone giant stone warrior did not exist at the same time. End show. The stone warrior only appeared for one episode in season two, and it was dealt with in one episode. And then the Cole's driller only appeared once they got to the island. So <laughs> that that is unless. This giant stone warrior is meant to be Garmadon's construct, just stylized, which I True. think it is supposed I to be. Might be but... Because the scale is yeah. too too bizarre. Like Kozu, not or whoever the not Kozu, the giant stone warrior they mm -hmm. fought in the museum yeah. was like to scale with the people, the minifigures itself. Whereas this is to scale with the vehicle. Yeah. Um, I would wager it's more a stylized interpretation of the latter. Okay. I mean, but that's I think just, it's the giant we'll never be able warrior, to know. But, and yeah, we, d we did see the Stone Warrior again in Cryptarian Prison and oh, yeah. in Season oh, 4 thanks. and then back in Season 6 and which is Turn of Elements and Skybound for Yes, yes, yes. Question. <laughs> but, <laughs> but my yeah. goodness. I appreciate but, yeah, the clarifications but I don't know them by number. <laughs> <laughs> but it's but cool. yeah, I really like the set. I'm probably going to get this one because I have the old one. <coughs> it'd be really okay. Anyone else? Mm. Aren't, cool. aren't you a fan of Cold too, Purple? Mm, kind of. Jay's my favorite, but I there like we go. Too. A lady of culture. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Wow. Um. Yeah. No. This is this is admittedly a set. Which exists in our timeline, and I think it does a fairly <laughs> decent job of it does a fairly do decent job of, of representing what it is intending to be. I do like the large stone army fellow, awfully cool, and I actually think the drill is better in this one because it has a tiny drill at the end of the drill. So it's like if you like drills, yeah. we got oh drills God. on your drills, so you can drill while you drill. Oh my gosh! I was expecting a grand uh -huh. reference. So this is this is fine. It exists. We'll go ahead and move on. Hashtag. Is this the last set? This is the last this set. This is oh, the this last is the set. Best one. For now. All oh. right. Yes, this is the last oh, set boy. we have photos of. There is uh, rumor has there's another one. However, we're not going to get into that right now. All right. Last one. It is set number seven zero six seven zero. Monastery. Of Spin Jitsu. The set contains roughly 1,080 pieces and retails for roughly $80. Now, according to oh, Ninjago, according to Ninjago Wikia, this set is supposedly a reimagined variant of set number 2504 Spin Jitsu Dojo from 2011. Now, I will let you all make your own inferences on this one. I will show a picture of this. <laughs> <laughs> Momentarily, the initial set, if it is actually supposed to be based off of this, contains roughly 373 pieces and retailed for $50. So, Dang. <laughs> this is a substantial 
improvement. In the set, you not only get Wu, but you get all of the other ninja, including Mesa's favorite villain, Whiplash, with his sweet new haircut. And in addition, this set has all four of the golden weapons. Discuss. Wait, what well, is that? Whiplash <coughs> isn't the one with the mohawk. He's the one with the hat. Yeah. Lame. Whiplash is actually fine. I don't have any beef with Whiplash. Like, he looks completely different, and I still wonder why they felt the need to redesign the Skulkin so severely. But I don't really care in this one because they actually have armor and they don't have ludicrous hair pieces. Like, I can. They're different, but I can still tell that's meant to be generally. The same character. No, no beef on this one. Um, the monastery looks incredible, Should even if it is longer. just a folded wall, which is basically what it is. Mm -hmm. It looks super cool. It's very ornamental, and the front door entrance way gives the illusion of depth. Um, maybe I'm a tad spoiled by all the recent crazy Ninjago buildings we've been getting. I wish this was in that bracket. <laughs> what this is is only eighty dollars. Can't really beat it. It has mm -hmm. good value. It has over a thousand pieces. Yeah. So, and like and every ninja. ninja. Yep. Yeah. Jinx. And woo. So it's good. I have no yeah. complaints. Really. Oh, I want this set. <laughs> so good. Indeed. And you're gonna get two of them and like make a big circle, aren't you? I might, and I'll see if if I have enough pieces to like actually create depth off the back of it. That'd but, be um, awesome. I get two, and then gotta make that room um, with the video games. <laughs> yeah, oh the video game room and Sensei's uh, smoking room. And uh, okay, your mumbling is over. Anyone else? No. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. it looks cool. And if this set had come out in like 2012, 2013, I thousand percent would have gotten it because like I really wanted a monastery set like that. But mm -hmm. it's a little late for me. So. Wait, what if they rebuild it? Wait, you're not gonna get it now? No, I don't have anywhere to put it. Uh -oh. Anyway, that's that's a reasonable yeah, that's my issue explanation. Too. Thanks, I try. Okay. Now it's it's funny that Zane is on the side of this one. Like, why would Zane be on the side of the monastery box? But then if you think back. Does Zane Tommy is the away? reason why the monastery burnt oh, yeah. down in the first place. <laughs> Ice no, was also not wanted... nice. Well, <laughs> yeah, he also like found the bounty. And but... yeah, he also found the bounty. Which also got destroyed many times. <laughs> <laughs> many many times. In the monastery. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's a weird situation because all the Ninjago fans who were interested in buying iconic locations and have a lot of room already bought all the other big buildings. Now they have no room for the OG big building. It's yeah. kind of funny that they finally made a set. Yeah, the irony is if the monastery was a bigger building, I'd probably be more likely to get it. Yeah. Yeah. And force away. Because it looks cool, but it is very, uh, very archetypal of sets in that price bracket. There's a lot of sets like it that do this exact same thing. Even the, um, what was it, the Battle for Ninjago City set mm -hmm. is like very similar to this. Yeah. Um, just this is done better with modern building techniques. Mm -hmm. And it's not like solely flat, like that right there, you know. Mm -hmm. Very yeah. similar, Monastery just looks better. Yeah. Yeah. Looks more accurate. It feels yep. like it feels like it's back in season one in a pilot season, which is good because it's supposed to be. Yeah. Mhm. Mm That's about all I think. Okay. Uh, I yep. I think it's it's absolutely wonderful. I think this is easily one of the best Ninjago sets for the TV show because I I very obviously have a bias toward the Ninjago movie sets, specifically the city yeah. and the docks, but this mm -hmm. one. This one is probably the best Ninjago TV show set. And this is, I think, the one Whoa. that actually gets it. It gets it right, everyone. This is the one. It says season one on the box, and it's 100% accurate, except for Nia being a ninja. But you know what? I can forgive and that. Pythor. Excuse me? And skeletons and attacking the... 
Must have got I can, I'm, I'm, I'm not looking at what they decided to adorn season one with, just what it represents on the box. And look, it's got the skeletons, it's got all the ninja, Nia is there in at least a capacity. This is the quintessential season one set, and I think that is excellent. So Nia kind of got kidnapped, which is like the whole thing behind <laughs> the show. So oh, great! No, that's, 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 that's perfect. Think about it. You could just take the minifig, sell it on Bricklink, and boom, oh completely accurate. It's make it's, your money back. It's exactly. She started trying to become a ninja in the monastery way, way back in episode one. But <clears throat> but uh, but yeah. So uh, obviously oh. on screen. Wait, LJ. What? Do you think that's the best set, or like really? I'm I'm. I mean, it can be. Uh, you might you might be forgetting one uh, one big set. Oh yeah, one very major set. Oh, oh, oh of course, time. the Ninja Nightcrawler. Of course. Oh yeah. Okay, that one. That one's very good too. But no, no, what do you no, guys? The me? best. The best set is obviously Enter the Serpent. Remember that? No. The Temple of Air Jitsu. <laughs> what about it? <laughs> That's amazing. That set's amazing. It's a better Ninjago. That was City. that was like the Ninjago City before Ninjago City. I know, but then it got Ninjago Cityed. Oh <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, yes, obviously enough, that is an incredible set. It is absolutely spectacular and wonderful to look at. I would make the argument that this one is the more quintessential Ninjago set than oh, yeah. Temple of Air Jitsu for a, a, a few reasons. First of all, the suits are, a, I feel they can be a smidge divisive. And more specifically, it's in the name, Temple of Air Jitsu. Air Jitsu. Oh, my God. I mean, really, if you want a more forgettable <laughs> concept. Wow. This one is literally called the Monastery of Spinjitsu. It's in the very show Dang. all of the time. It is quintessential Ninjago. It's one of the most iconic Andre locations. making the big points. So mm -hmm. I, I think that maybe Temple of Air Jitsu is the better set, potentially. I don't own it, admittedly. However, I will make the oh, argument that this is the quintessential book. Ninjago set in the same way Monog is the quintessential Bionicle yeah. experience. Yeah, yeah very, true. Okay. <laughs> very true. Very <laughs> true. So, uh, as one final point, I actually think that this set is slightly undercut by something. And that something is the box art. I think that this is a massively unfortunate side effect of having really excellent box art. If you look, you can see that the monastery is set up on a very realistic to the show looking location. It looks excellent. You go to you have the stairs to the top of the mountain, you have that kind of odd pattern that I can't really describe on the floor. It looks absolutely spectacular. Hmm? Isn't it like a dragon a spiral? A, a, spiral a tile, energy. a tile. I think that was that's right. It looks excellent. But then you actually see the set and realize you get two structures and there is nothing else. And I think this is a set that would benefit extremely well from having a base plate. Not, not, not necessarily a base plate, but like a base cloth. Because Lego has been yeah. doing these... Oh, agreed. Agreed 100%. Yeah. Lego has been doing these kind of extra packs and they have these base cloths where they have like the roads and all sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's really excellent. I think this would benefit more oh, than yeah. basically any other set from having something like that. It's still really excellent. Oh, 100% agreed. I just feel that the box art does the set a disservice by being really good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> I'll agree with that. And that might actually be what makes the set look so appealing compared to the other ones is because of, you know, it looks like it's actually there. It's a diorama. It's a so. set piece, but it's a sham. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm I'm probably just gonna make it. I just just will draw it and put it on a box that makes it look like a rock, and boom. So I'm gonna do it with a temple. So that's fair. It's it reasonable ingenuity. So. Yeah. But well, in summary, this wave is a wave of highs and lows. I feel that most of it is successes, if not all of it. Like there's no set here that I would consider bad. There are some sets that I would say didn't need to be made. There's some sets that would have tweaked a few things. But I think everything they tried to do, they did it mostly well. Um, 
Yeah, from like a set design perspective, it, it's good. Magic Ninja says, can we please talk about the Serpentine? They look ugly. <laughs> they oh always look ugly. Oh my god, the Serpentine are the whole reason I got into the show in the first place. They're that cool sets. That surprise me. They're, they're, cool, they're cool concepts. <laughs> The Serpentine, the Serpentine minifigures. are so important to Ninjaga. The Serpentine minifigures were always trash. Oh, I will my agree. Gosh. I will agree that new Lasha <laughs> does look worse than old Lasha, but old Lasha also looked like trash. Oh my god! Let's be wow. real. Let's be honest with ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. Oh, Remember Choken, the epic <laughs> minifigure. Choken. I thought it was adorable. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mesa wouldn't have minded if Choken choked on a piece of food and died. So, oh my god, Ch Choken really strikes fear into the hearts of everyone with his ugly oh freaking god. buck teeth. No, oh, he's so cute. Hey, hey everyone, the country I'm like... Choken. Nice to make your acquaintance. I'm a transparent image instead of a a solid image for some reason. So I'm just gonna float around the screen all willy nilly. Or what about what about the 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 fangpire dude on the left who looks like he's wearing a toad hat from Mario? <laughs> and it's completely unintimidating. Or the dude on the right who has a head that's like almost bigger than his body, <laughs> but right. stubby little legs. Like they were never <laughs> good many figures. I'm gonna make a declaration. <laughs> they weren't even good in the show either, which is disappointing. Because as an American, yeah. declarations are a bit important to us. As oh, of this time, November the 25th at 7:33 dating the video mountain time yes this is i am i'm dating the video i officially declare choken as the official mascot for ninjago cast <laughs> <Yay>. nice <laughs> and if right. you if you look no. at the video now you shall see choken adorning the o in ninjago what? oh my, oh my goodness look at this oh. he's standing there Triumphant. Oh my god, he is! That actually looks cool! <laughs> <laughs> All hail Choken. Uh, Artie in the YouTube chat. Yo, yo, Choken. <laughs> <laughs> the Dragon Cast 23, Choken's Takeover by Mr. Lego Lover 55. I like that. Oh my gosh. Choken Cast. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Oh. But yeah. Which means, which means LJ you need to do an episode where you talk as Choken the whole time. I I would have to go back and see what his voice sounds like. I could probably do it at the risk I, of my I, vocal cords. Does he even talk? He yeah, probably has. Like he a has to talk. He's Choken. I think he has a. We're talking like once. I think he has a high pitched voice like this. If if I can sure. spend over half an hour listening to the lines Dale Wilson recorded for Lewa and Mask of Life, Mask of Life. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, then can I can spend the however long I need to listening to one recording of Choken. Apparently, D. Tenaglia like really likes Choken. Oh boy! <laughs> I looked okay. up a uh, Choken on YouTube. Oh, is he the, <gasps> does he have a giant? He's the one with the giant ham sandwich line. <gasps> oh, okay. Oh my, oh my god! <laughs> that is representative of the okay. Choken experience. Completely I'm gonna, redeemed. I'm gonna He's play 100 this. He's one hundred percent redeemed. Here, let, let me let me listen to this line real quick, and everyone can listen along with me. Can you create a giant ham sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Can you create a giant from... ham sandwich? Perfect. That is from episode 15. No, of season no, 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 two. No, it's not episode 15, episode 16 of Double Trouble. Of season two. Of season and, two. And it's, it's funny because LJ, LJ is also famed for his ham sandwich creation. Oh my gosh, you're right! <laughs> I think I'm gonna make a giant ham sandwich. <laughs> Choking sounds like he's had one too many cigarettes with his ham sandwich. <laughs> oh, over he's... the side. Okay. <clears throat> well, is uh, there anything else any of you guys would like to mention or discuss very briefly before we wrap up? Can we get a. Is there that. anything else counter? I feel like that'd be funny. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to give it. everyone a chance to speak. No, I know, I know. <laughs> I appreciate it. Do you, you, have do you really? Haley, Haley and I don't need prompts, and Purple's not going to say anything ever, so we're fine. 
I'm trying to be a good host. I got it lagged out, but I feel like you just insulted me. He did. I did not insult you. I spoke the truth of the world. (laughs) All right. In that case, thank you all so very much for listening. Wait, I have one more thing. (laughs) (laughs) But I guess you needed the prompt after all. (laughs) See, Messa, this is what happens. I was trying to say something until Tyler was being. Bean to purple. Yep. Uh, this is what happens yeah. when I try and, and let have, you override I have things. One more thing to say. This is why sexism is bad. Oh my <laughs> gosh. gosh. Wow. <laughs> oh my goshness. You can take Mesa out of Mississippi, but you can't take Mississippi out of Mesa. So. I... <laughs> <laughs> why you gotta be like that? Just... <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Anyway. Say your piece. So what is very interesting about these sets is that they don't go past season two. They don't go into rebooted and tournament elements. So season my question three. is that we discussed is, uh, is are there going to be future legacy waves? Guaranteed will... there will be. I hope yeah. so. Where they will it's tackle gonna... sets from rebooted. And... The point will get a little moot the farther things go on because the build techniques, you know, the whole point of this is like, are you going to re- remake older sets in new ways? Because the build system has evolved, most notably with Mixel joints. It's going to get a little awkward when we get into the era where Mixel joints were already present because there might not be ways to elevate the sets any more than there were at that time. Um but I'm sure I almost guarantee there will be more. When, I do not know. Probably not 2019 because they've already said there's going to be a lot more Ninjago TV content. So there's probably going to be new sets based off that. But in the future, guaranteed. Yeah, because it's very odd they don't go past season two. Yeah. They could cut down on the amount of uh, shows and episodes they make each year if they do what Prentice suggests. <laughs> one wave each year is a legacy wave, which means they only need one story arc a year. Well, I mean, that's technically what they've been doing. So, mm-hmm. I mean, just Sons of Garment on Hunted was a little different because of how yeah, closely was. connected they are. But, I mean, I won't complain as long as it comes out yearly, new season. You will complain if they half the episode count? <laughs> Yeah, but I'm also All hoping right. that a song called Legacy will come from the fold, but I don't think it will happen. But fold is done. Hopeful. No, they folded. Oh my gosh. Okay, LJ, you can go now. <laughs> okay, I don't like the way you worded that. Oh, you can continue. LJ, you can leave. You can now. go now. Get out of here. It's yeah, like LJ. Mesa says something. Awful. It's like, okay, well, wow, that was pretty terrible. LJ, LJ get, get out of here. here. <laughs> it's all your fault, LJ. Wonderful. All right. In that case, thank you all so very much for listening to yet another episode of Ninjago Cast. We don't know when it will be back. Usually, we try and reserve Ninjago Cast for stuff like this or primarily episode reviews, which oh, everyone. I'll be back when we talk about the uh, the Ultra Dragon set. Potentially. <clears throat> Which is going to get uh, Target exclusive, by the way. That's... We know because it's on Britsick. Okay. Okay, got it. So, we will let everyone know exactly when when things will be back and, and back in operation. A few things before we leave. First of all, go ahead and feel free to check out the Patreon that we have going. T- Patreon.com slash TTV channel. Uh, $1 a month, and you can get into the Patreon server, which, of course allows you to not only be featured as a part of the video uh, in way of the chat, but also contribute to conversations and discussions, because while we do watch the YouTube live chat, I promise we do, we also pay direct attention to the Patreon server because it is right in front of us at all times, because it's where we actually record everything. So, in addition, over on the TTV message boards, we do in fact have a topic for top 10 moments of TTV in 2018, because 2017 just wasn't going to happen. So if you have a moment, head on over to that topic and post your moment, video, and timestamp. And correct timestamp. Thank you. And make certain that it is in the topic before the last day of 2018. Okay, I think that's pretty much everything. So once again, thank you all so very much for listening. I am Sensei LJ. I am Messer. Oh my gosh. I am purple. And I'm Haley. And this has been Ninjago Cast. 
Masters of Pod Jitsu. Class is dismissed. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. <laughs> I mean, technically that's true. <laughs> Okay. Dojo's now closed. You know what? Everyone's a critic! <laughs> <laughs>